on that task I'm force. About that. And I know that she's doing some good work to look into the consequences of the decisions that were made over the last couple okay. of years. Um, energy is an incredibly complex system with obviously a highly regulated utility, independent, you know, you've got the, the um, renewable portfolio standards. This is an area where I had to tell you, I still need to do some homework. Yeah. Um, having been only in this race for six weeks, I am still getting up to speed. So I'm, I'm less confident in saying this is exactly what we should yeah. do, but we've got to do something. You can't crush. I mean, I have a lot of empathy for the 17,000 homeowners who invested in rooftop mm -hmm. solar um, with the assumption that there was going to be a return on that investment over a course of years that would, would make it make sense for them to do that. And now they're just, you know, hung out to dry. But I'm not to, to the point where I can say what the solution is, just that we definitely need to revisit it. And I'll be um, checking in with my colleague, my hopefully future colleague, Senator yeah. Spearman, about the progress of the task force. Yeah, and staying on the topic of clean energy, um, I, I noticed uh, recently the cities of Reno and Henderson filed amicus briefs in support of the EPA's clean power plan. Um, what would you like to see happen at the state level in terms of um, uh, moving forward, complying with the Clean Power Plan, or perhaps uh, pursuing something a little different? Yeah, it totally makes sense to me that we should yeah. be moving towards a clean power source, um, and Nevada is just a mecca for mm -hmm. renewable energy. We have such a wonderful geothermal industry in the north. Mm -hmm. um, we've got obviously great solar opportunities throughout the state, but particularly in the south. We've toyed with wind. We're still, I don't know that we've yeah. seen as much progress with wind, but we have all kinds of opportunity. And so there's really no reason for us to be dependent on old, dirty sources of power. So we should be moving in that direction. Mm -hmm. And um, I guess uh, <laughs> going to something completely different, you know, this, this is an issue that has been getting more attention lately, you know, thanks to uh, the Nevada caucuses. Mm -hmm and what's been happening um, at uh, some county party conventions. You know, um, I've heard from some folks in the South asking, well, why do we have this in the, fir in the first place? Other states have primaries. Why can't we have one? Um, if elected to uh, the legislator, would you con consider um, legislation to move Nevada to a primary state? Yeah. So I'm willing to consider just about yeah. anything. Um, so I, I think like, like everything, there's no perfect system. There are pros and cons to both. Yeah. And so the pros of a caucus system are the engagement, right? Mm -hmm. And that Nevada became relevant. So be, when we were a primary state before, we were late in the primary system. Yeah. By the time, I know by the time that I was ever voting on a presidential primary yeah. for most of my life, the race was already decided Mm -hmm. What we had to say in Nevada really didn't matter. So certainly by being one of the first caucus states, which is a rare privilege, or one of the first states, yeah. which is a rare privilege across the nation, uh, we become a lot more relevant. The candidates come see us. That's an exciting thing. Um, and when we have people caucus, the really cool side about it, or the upside about yeah. it, is the thousands, I mean literally thousands of volunteers who get involved in order to organize that system, put on that system. And most of those volunteers stay involved and stay stay involved in the next level of politics. They start paying attention to their state races and their mm -hmm. local races. I'm not sure if they would do that before. So that is really a benefit. The downside is it really disenfranchises a whole segment of the population mm -hmm. who can't get there on a Saturday yeah. because they're working, or um, you know, if you're Jewish and you are practicing your faith, or if you are disabled yeah. and it's just not realistic. So. Um, I think we need to figure out how, if we're going to stick with the caucus system, we need to figure out how to make it more flexible. Yeah. We need to figure out how to make it more reasonable. It really just does not feel like it needs to take as much time as it does. The same with the convention. Um, mm -hmm. But I'm still, I'm still on the fence and need to learn a little bit yeah. more about what the other options would be. Okay. And finally, um, you know, coming from a background in local government, mm -hmm. you, know, um, you know, should it be elected to the uh, state senate? Um, what what would you like to do? What are you hoping your colleagues and legislator will do to um, build a better working relationship with both local governments and with the federal government? 
So the primary concern of local government is unfunded mandates. Yeah. You know, some folks at the legislature have some really great ideas mm -hmm. that they would like to see happen at a policy level. Yeah. They push them down to local government. It's not that I don't think that they're a good idea. Mm -hmm. Many of them are great ideas. Unfortunately, they don't come with any funding. Mm -hmm. And so again, when you're at the local government, you're completely dependent on the funding sources that the state allows. When they ask us to do more, but they don't give us more money, it puts, it makes it very difficult. Yeah. And so, you know, that's the number one thing is that if we have policy priorities, we have to figure out how to fund them, whether they happen at the state level, the local level, the school district. You can't just say you must mm -hmm. do this, but then not have have a funding source behind it that makes that happen. Because when that does happen, then it erodes the other services that we're providing at the local level. So for me, that's the number one thing, mm -hmm. is we've got to figure out how to move past unfunded mandates for local government. Mm -hmm. Well, thank you so much for that. Yeah, it's great. Enjoyed it. Yeah. <laughs>